Today, we're gonna make a Christmas berry traditional mead. Let's get started. So you might be asking, what is Christmas berry blossom honey? Well, Christmas berry honey comes from Christmas berry blossoms, which are a bright yellow or produce a bright yellow nectar. They are, one fun fact about this honey, it's slower crystallizing, which I find to be interesting. And it's from Hawaii. So it is a more, I would say, tropically kind of specialty kind of honey you might not be able to get. So this has reminiscent tastes of chestnuts and herbal notes, warm spice, some people say dried fig and plum. There's a lot of interesting characters that can come out of this honey, which is why I want to make a traditional with it. I'm also making a boche in a separate video. You can find that on the channel. So here's how I made this mead. Uh, it's pretty easy. Traditional meads, you just take your recipe, which is on the screen right now. I took this starter recipe and I mixed in all of my honey and my water and my yeast. Now, of course I sanitized all that stuff before. Um, once that was all mixed up, I took a gravity reading, and then I went ahead and did something kind of lazy. I um, pitched my yeast alongside my Fermaid O, all in that primary state. Normally, you can kind of do something else, like a staggered nutrient schedule with your uh, your yeast nutrient, but I, uh, I'm being lazy. I started quite a few projects all at once, and I don't want to have to monitor each. So I mixed all that together. We're going to let it go through the primary and come right back and see what it's like. So about 30 days later, it's finished fermenting and we are now racking it over into a new container. And I'm gonna stabilize it so we can back sweeten safely. I'm stabilizing with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite. You don't have to use these. The alternatives would be to pasteurize or to let it set for a really long time, but that's not necessarily a great option. This is just a a good solution. We are now going to jump to a tasting and next steps. All right, here we are for a tasting at the three month mark. We are literally pretty much three months old right now. This thing ooh, has so much fruitiness to it and it definitely feels, oh, it's pretty smooth off, on the nose at least. Oh yeah, this is like juicy fruitiness. Oh yeah. The character, it really does have a kind of a mixed berry, a little bit of almost like a reaching into the, the light notes of strawberry coming out of this honey. A smidge of heat, that's pretty good. I'm definitely super impressed with this. And um, I, I wanna do one more thing. I like, personally, I like the acidity on it. I think it acid-wise, it's fine. What I wanna do is add a little more tannin. It's got a little sweetness. Um, I don't think we went completely dry. It has a perceived sweetness or actual sweetness. It has sweetness. We have the acidity kind of combatant, but we don't have the barrel or oak side. So here are all of my options. I've got a bunch of them. I have the ability to use oak chips, which are these right here. And I have them in many forms right now. I have mocha oak chips. I've got whiskey barrel oak chips. I've got French oak, heavy toast American oak. Um, I've also got French oak cubes and I have this French oak spiral that is almost, is not really used. So what am I going to choose? I think I'm going to choose a not super heavy toast oak. So I'm going to go with a French, medium toast French oak. And um, I think it'll just add a nice light tinge of oakiness to this. I'm going to use about a... Hmm, half an ounce for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it, uh, take them and put them in water to get them going. So my oak is currently getting, well, you're supposed to do this oak. Before you add it, you're supposed to put it in some water. It just kind of gets it going. With every mead, you need to have a good balance. I want this mead to be balanced between acidity, sweetness, and tannin. Now, I'll tell you right now, if you don't have a good balance, you probably are not gonna have a good mead. Um, and this will help balance this mead out, especially in the tannin world. Tannin is the gripping mouthfeel. Oftentimes, oak accompanies tannin. 
All right, it's been about 10 minutes. Not a super long time. I could let it go longer, but I got things to do tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and strain this off and we're gonna add it. Okay, so part of why I've chosen the chips instead of the others, chips move faster. So this, this will be completely oaked and ready in probably seven to 14 days. I will taste test it pretty much every day to see where the toast or the um, oaking level is. And then we'll pull it off when we think we're done with it. And since it's stabilized and I don't plan on back sweetening anymore, we're gonna bottle it. So I'll come back with a final tasting and all of that. All right, so here's what I've done. Went ahead and racked it over about five days, six days of oaking. I feel like it was at a good level. So um, I liked the, the toast level, the um, basically the flavors were melding well. It wasn't too oaky, which is what I was going for. Then I took a taste test and I was like, well, what does it need now? So after tasting it, I decided I need to adjust it with two things, which I haven't done the other thing and I will in a moment. It needs a little more pop, more acid pop. So I'm using malic acid. Malic acid is one of the three main acids in brewing. You can buy separate, it's right here. Um, I believe I only need, I'm doing it to taste and it's only gonna be about um, an eighth of a teaspoon, a, a tiny amount of malic acid to add some pop. And I went ahead and back sweetened. It is stabilized, so it's safe. So here we go. Yeah, stabilized. Um, the, the acid helps it, again, pop some, gives it a little more, I don't know what a better word for that is, character. <laughs> uh, the, the honey sweetness, of course, adds more of the interesting berry kind of aromas or flavors you get from this honey. The um, warm floral notes are coming back. I think it's really nice. The oak is there. It's got a great tannin to sweetness to acidity level, and it was flabby before. I'm having to do a lot to this brew to get it to be as nice as I want, but that's okay. That's kind of how you have to work with brewing sometimes. Um, so uh, I am gonna pitch my little eighth of a teaspoon of acid into this. After that, I'll bottle it and we'll be back for a final tasting. So here we go. All right, here we are for the grand finale of this video. It's been about four or five days since I did the other stuff in that clip. Um, I went ahead and let it set for a little bit, hopefully let things drop out of suspension if there was stuff, which there was a little bit, um, and then we bottled it. So you'll see some video of that right now. I, in total, for this one gallon batch, I got um, two, 375 or actually this is a 500 milliliter bottle right here a 375 milliliter a 750 milliliter or a wine bottle if you're familiar with that then three beer bottles or four excuse me four beer bottles worth so not a bad haul from this uh, one gallon recipe i'm pretty pleased with that let's go ahead and crack one of these open and get to the final tasting all right, so first of all, look at the clarity on this thing. It's pretty dang clear. Um, it does have a little bit of haze to it, as you can see, but I'd say that's pretty clear. It looks pretty good. Um, it's still, when you are um, submitting meads to competitions, you normally have to label it as still, petalant, or sparkling. This would be still, because there's no carbonation or degassing or anything like that. So um, obviously, if there is any of those things, you have to go petalant or uh, sparkling. This is a grand total of 13.3-ish um, percent. We started at 1.110 starting gravity after the primary was 1.008, and your final gravity was one point, or this for this one was 1.020. So 102 points of gravity thrown into the formula is probably about that 1.13.3-ish percent. Now, I am very pleased with it. Yeah, on the nose, it's super um, warm. It's definitely got a lot of barrel side to it. You can definitely, it has a lot of that nice oak roundness to it that is also um, blanketing kind of sweetness. It's a dark berry, dark floral note here. Here we go. Oh yeah, it's like, it's taken a lot to get here, but from the start of it, the honey character was really nice. 
Obviously fermentation can change some of that. Yeast will impart the characters that they want. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased with the yeast on this one. The tannin from the oak is very pleasant. You get a lot of nice um, uh, sweetness, obviously from back sweetening. And then that little bit of uh, acid adjustment that we did took this to the next level. It, it kind of makes it more three dimensional. If you're tasting your brew and you're going, well, it tastes sweet, but that's about it. You're probably missing tannin and acidity. Or if you taste it and go, ooh, it's really acidic, but that's about it. You're probably missing tannin and sweetness. See where I'm going here? This is a three dimensional shape um, thing we're making. This has all three. At this current point of tasting, we are three months old. Of course, I believe this thing will get even better with age. There is a smidge of booziness that comes with it being young. This is a traditional mead, which means that it probably needs more time. Um, sweetness does help to temper down some of the harshness of um, a mead. I think this thing's really good. Traditional meads are hard to make. And if you're making one right now and you run into complex issues, um, look at those three things first, tannin, sweetness, acidity, and ask yourself, do I get any of those? If you don't, you can adjust them in many different ways. Um, if you wanna adjust your sweetness, sweetness is easy because it's all what sugar you add to it. Now I will say, and I'll make sure you know this, you're probably watching this as somebody who's made a mead before, but if not, when you back sweeten, you need to have stabilized if your sugars, or excuse me, if your yeast can continue to consume sugars. If your yeast have stopped to where they can't consume anymore, um, then you can maybe get away with it. There's a good chance that they just ran out of fermentable sugar. This one was a weird case. This stopped early. So technically I could have back sweetened without stabilizing, but I wanted to play it safe and go ahead and stabilize. Because if this starts to re-ferment in the bottles, there's a good chance that it will just ruin the brew that I have. If I've back sweetened so much that it is like dangerous, like it will re-ferment beyond just a normal amount of sparkling and actually create bottle bombs, that's, that's dangerous. So stabilize your stuff. You can pasteurize it if you would like to do it that way, but make sure that your fermentation is done completely before you back sweeten. Um, so you can actually do this safely. Don't create a bottle bomb. The good news is I have this traditional mead video with Christmas berry honey. Um, I am also making a Christmas berry boche, which is a caramelized version of this uh, honey. And I've made that into a separate video because I think that one is unique in its own right. And I wanna kind of mess with that. So you'll see that in the future. I have made a lot of traditional meads, and if you would like to see uh, most of them, look on the channel. I've, I have a bunch of traditionals with different kinds of honey. Uh, I also did a big mead tournament with 16 traditional meads that I did this past year or this year. It was a lot of fun. You can check those out to see which of my traditional meads was the best, but I appreciate your time. Um, please hit like and subscribe if you would like to join. Um, join the man-made mead people and just see videos. I really appreciate all of that and I hope that you have a great day. So, cheers.